Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is a couple different types of blocks. Uh, the first one we're going to be looking at is the return blocks, these ones right here. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going under the advanced tab and scrolling down and looking at the call procedure and get return value as well as the call procedure blocks and basically what these ones do. So today that's what we're going to be doing and we'll start with the return blocks. So if you go under the flow control and then there will be a whole bunch of return blocks here. So there's a, there, there's a variety of colors that you can actually pick from. A lot of these have uh, linkage to certain other things. Uh, the green one, for example, is the same shade as global procedures. So if you wanted to do something with global procedures, then you could basically set up something like a right click event. And then you could go to the, I believe it was, where was it? Uh, logic, was it? No. Um, advanced, maybe. No, it was um, Minecraft components. Yeah, there it is, Minecraft components. And then you can basically set a action result. So uh, what action results do is it helps with uh, certain aspects of how things are supposed to be running. Uh, success will basically run it like how it should be from what I understand. Consume will basically cons uh, cancel out all extra contents of the uh, procedure. So for example, if you right click, sometimes other events let happen when you're right clicking uh, when using in a global procedure. Uh, for example, when you right click on a furnace, uh, it has a GUI, it might open even though that you have tried to use the cancel global trigger. This could basically allow you to cancel that out um, indefinitely. Uh, the other one is pass. I'm not sure what the pass does, but I think that what that one will do is it will basically allow you to um, ignore certain actions and stuff like that. And then you have um, fail, which is basically pretty self-explanatory. It's just it's going to fail the condition. So uh, those that's the green one. There's a few other options that you might f find. Uh, we'll cover that in a little bit, but. Um, then you have the yellow block. This is for returning blocks. So what return blocks basically do is it allows you to get a return value and use it in another procedure. We'll cover that part in a little later in the video. So make sure to stick around. I'll make sure to time code everything so it's easier to find the sections and stuff like that. So return blocks, again, this is for blocks. So if you wanted to return a specific block, uh, at a location, you could basically use the X, Y, and Z and return that value, or you could use variables. Uh, the block state should work with that. So if you have a block state um, variable, you could assign a variable to a block state, and then you could basically um, get that return value like so. So that will be pretty consistent through all the different types of procedures and stuff like that. So any of these little um, parts with the little uh, puzzle pieces on the part, uh, I forget what they're called, but you can basically use all those with the little return block. So it's pretty handy. And then what we have is the uh, direction return block. So you can return certain directions under Minecraft components. So you can get target face. Um, this would allow you to return the target face direction. And then there's a few other ones uh, down direction integer or in, I can't remember what that how it's pronounced, but basically that one. And then there is your standard northwest east south uh, directions. So all these ones. So you can return those values. You can also return the values of certain blocks as well. So you might have to get the block location, but you could get the return block under the direction of a certain block as well, and then call that into another procedure. Um, then you have the, I believe this one's entities. So you can return specific entities. Uh, again, you can use local variables as well. So you can return a local variable. Uh, you can, uh, if we go under the entities tab, there should be a few 
things in here that we can get. So get entity that is writing, we can get return that value. Basically anything that is the same color with one of those little puzzle pieces we can basically put in here. So all these three things, we can um, put the few other things in here. If we go under world management, uh, world data, pardon me, and then scroll down, we can also put the nearest entity. So we can basically get the nearest entity if we wanted to. So that's really handy. And um, I believe there's all the different uh, entity types which are right here as well. So immediate source entity, uh, source entity, event slash target entity, and the entity thing here. So we can place all those down as well as local variables. So it's really handy for that. And then we have the item stack one. So we can put basically any item stack procedure. So uh, these ones we can put in, we could get the uh, main hand from the player if we wanted to. There is quite a few different uh, item ones that we can actually put in here. So uh, get random item from tank. So we could do that as well if we wanted to. So you have quite a bit of options that you can actually get as well as uh, actually just grabbing an item and then returning a certain value you could do that as well so if you wanted to return a grass block item then you could do that um, then what we have is we have the logic so with the other procedures or return blocks you might come into com contact with thinking that you could actually attach the um, operators to it. Now I covered operators in another video uh, recently. I will link to that on the screen. It will be in the card so you guys can quickly go to that video and learn about operators and if statements. But uh, as you can see these ones can't actually accept the uh, re re operators themselves. Uh, most of these outside of the return value for logic can't do that. So if you wanted to get a return logic for the uh, logic ones, then you could basically put an operator on that and then test for a condition. Uh, but all the other return blocks are not going to do that. And again, there's a lot more support for true or false statements for these ones. So for example, you could put all the block uh, is water um, entity and then that one you could basically go ahead and do um, block conditions so if you have the block state plugin then you could basically return the, the if it's water logged or not uh, that should be added in pretty soon to the base program so uh, the block state should be able to be supported um, pretty soon without needing a plugin uh, there's a whole bunch of other blocks and stuff. Basically, anything that is kind of like the cyan color, you can basically go ahead and put in there. If you want to get the uh, valid position of a certain block, then you could do that as well. Um, you could test if the block location at a certain location where something is going to be planted is valid, and then you could basically return that value. If it's true, then you could return if that if it is true or not. Uh, under certain conditions though, um, most of the time you won't be just adding a return block to the main thing. Most likely you'll have a condition and then you'll basically return a certain value. So again, you would have something like, um, let me just find the blocks, uh, something like return true. And then you would have something like return false when it fails. So there will always be a basically one outside of your actual condition. And then there will be also the condition that you want to actually test for as well. So there's usually that you can always return just directly a value as well if you want to. So keep that in mind for all the return blocks. Uh, below that we have number values so these ones obviously pretty self-explanatory you can return certain values you can return numbers uh, random numbers uh, numbers between 1 and 10 if you wanted to and and so on so there's quite a few different uh, things that you can do with that um, often you might want to return a certain thing from a timer, get the value from a timer or something like that and send it to another procedure. You could have your timer in one pr procedure and then basically return the, re the value of that is returning like that, the time for it to another procedure without having to do something, uh, 
with a whole bunch of other stuff. So that would be really handy too. Um, and then the last one we have is strings. So basically any text that we can basically think of. So any text procedures we could put in here and we could basically get the return value for any item. So for example, if we wanted to return something like um, pop, corn we could return popcorn and then it would basically come up as that value in another procedure so um, I'm going to just quickly cover something else uh, some of the conditions uh, for additional conditions uh, there's condition procedures that you might have come across in the past uh, they will require a logic return value so you will need to return uh, true or false uh, depending on your condition so you would have your condition here um, for example if uh, the uh, let's see um, I'll just say if the entity is tagged under minecraft skeletons and we would return to true and if not then we're going to return false so this is basically the general setup that you would need with the logic um, conditions for returning or return logic return blocks for basically returning a certain value for a condition procedure. Uh, so uh, this is the only way that I've seen that it will actually work. I don't think other blocks will work with uh, the return with the conditions. So make sure to keep that in mind. All right. So now that we got that part out of the way, uh, we will go on to the call block. So I'm just going to actually quickly make a quick procedure and then I'll cut back in. All right, so I'm quickly made a quick test for um, a condition that will basically test for um, if the player or entity is in survival, and then we're going to return true if they are, and then what we're going to do is just basically uh, return false if they're not. So this is a pretty simple system for setting that up. We could also test for other conditions as well. Uh, we could basically return if they are in say spectator as well if we wanted to test if they're in spectator then we could do that or if it's the same value uh, that we're going to be returning for example logic uh, we don't really necessarily need those two we could just use a or block and then we could test for both values like that with one extra additional block and that would work just as well so say we're in spec survival or spectator then it's going to return true and then it's going to return false if it's uh, neither of these things so basically uh, advent uh, pardon me adventure or uh, creative so keep that in mind and then when we go to our other block here what we have is a brand new workspace we might want to set this to a global procedure or something like that uh, because this doesn't actually have any particular trigger you might have noticed that uh, we're going to need a trigger for this to run so in order for that we can either run it from a block procedure like a procedure from an, an element or um, a global procedure like one of these so in our case uh, the easiest thing to actually do is right click on block and then we have a whole bunch of different dependencies and stuff that we can basically work with all the basic ones like entity x y and z and our world are the most commonly used ones and then we also have direction block state and a few others so those are the ones it's also cancelable and it can only be run on server side only so we have to keep that in mind so then we have to basically call in that procedure so down at the bottom here you have a whole bunch of different call procedure and get return value and then we would basically select the value so they're also color coordinated you might have noticed that under the return blocks they're the same colors so we'll go back to here and then you can see they're all the same colors here so basically what we can do is we can go ahead and um, I'm not going to cover all of them because you would they're pretty self-explanatory blocks return block or directions entities item stacks logic number strings and then the um, global procedure one as well that we can call into so those are all the ones that you can basically call into uh, we have a return logic one so we're going to create that 
And then instead of having to basically use that whole condition with these two things, now if you have long per, long conditions, this is a really good way to um, basically shorten it and then you can like use two different procedures without needing to have to call um, or call a certain procedure in and design it in a certain way. Uh, then we would just basically click on that and I already have a whole bunch of them in this particular workspace So I'm just going to click the one that says return blocks and that's is that's all you need to do So it's basically going to do is return if it returns true This is going to be true and then the procedure will run for in this case We're going to just say let's replace the block with uh, Something like mossy cobblestone and then we can basically replace that block with uh, that we're right clicking on with mossy cobblestone. So that's basically that. Again, you could return any value that you want to. Now they're all coordinated to what kind of value, like what kind of type of operator. So if we wanted to return certain values for coordinates, we could do that as well with the coordinates if we wanted to. Uh, we could do the block state. So we could return almost every part of the procedure, uh, breaking it up into micro components and stuff like that. So uh, as you can see here, we could actually do quite a um, compl complicated system for all that stuff and return certain values and stuff. Now we don't actually have the numbers and stuff like that, but we could do that. Um, there's a whole bunch of different stuff that we could do. Uh, another good example, I already have a workspace that is designed, but I want to cover one last thing before we do that. Uh, the call procedures, I will cover that in just a sec. So the call procedures are basically set up to call other procedures. Now, in a sense, they're basically like the return blocks where you can basically call it, but rather than retur returning the value, it's going to run the exact procedure. So if you have... Um, a procedure that already has a event that is going to basically do something so say we're returning true and if true then what we're going to do is um, or let's just uh, target a specific entity so we could do the nearest entity does entity exist and then we're going to just test for the player so if the player is nearby and then you wanted to say, I don't know, um, return or do some sort of event with the player. So maybe deal one damage to set player. So for example, we could do something like, whoop, wrong one. Nearest entity, four blocks, player. And that would be basically the procedure that we'd basically call in. So pretend that we don't actually have a trigger for this. What we could do is we could go ahead and in our other procedure, uh, we'll just pretend this is a brand new one. And then we'll say we'll have a um, player update tick uh, because that would make sense. Not really, but um, I'm not sure. We could right click on a block, do a right click on block event. And then we could basically go ahead and call the procedure. Now, what this will do is it will basically get this procedure, run it like it is without needing any dependency. So you don't need a dependency for this particular one, but the dependencies it does have here, or pardon me, you don't need a trigger for this, but the dependencies you do have will have to be the same in the procedure for the actual procedure it's running. So for example, we only need to worry about X, Y, and Z and world uh, dependencies there, which is all covered right here. So X, Y, and Z and world. So we could call that procedure in if we wanted to. We just go basically uh, return and then select our procedure. Now this one doesn't actually, it's this one's not saved, but if we save it and then we try to load it in, it should be down here and then we can basically call that you can see that the dependencies show up on the uh, right hand side right under required dependencies and just make sure that they are the ones in here as well 
So that will basically call it at the uh, exact location where the player is probably right clicking on. Um, if you wanted to offset the coordinates, then where the procedure will run, then you could go under advance and then use the call procedure. And then you could do something like uh, get a math number operator, go Y plus one. And then you could basically offset the run condition for that same procedure. Um, we'll get the return value. So we could basically call the other procedure we just made, offset the call, the run location to Y plus one. And then it will call and execute that above the block that we're right clicking on. So you can do a whole bunch of stuff with that, um, with the different blocks and stuff like that. And it really helps us uh, shrink a whole bunch of script uh, that isn't really necessarily needed. Or if procedures get too long, it really helps with um, compacting things. I'll just cover over some of the script that I do have set up. So uh, this is the AI. Um, thing that I'm currently working on some of it well currently it's not working I ended up messing up the thing I'm still trying to fig figure out what's going on with it but if we go under commands and then yeah, I can basically show you um, what I've done with the directional script uh, I've basically called in a return value because the conditions that I wanted were getting a little bit too big and this is already a pretty big procedure. It's 177 blocks. Now with the other procedure uh, conditions, it would have easily gone over a thousand blocks. So what I've basically done is just called two values uh, for conditions in themselves, uh, ground movement east walking condition, and then there is the ground movement east jump condition. So Basically what I've done is if we go into conditions east, uh, there is something like 600 blocks in this procedure. So uh, there's a lot of different conditions that are tested for uh, different uh, tags and stuff like that. So I would just basically return true. If it's true, then I can basically go ahead and uh, we'll go back and then we can basically call it into the jump condition here. So this is the jump one and it's returning true if these conditions are met. And then we have the other condition, which is the east one. I haven't actually measured this one. I think it might be a little bit bigger. I'll just quickly measure that. Uh, this is 600. So they're about the same, I think. I'm not sure if the other one was 600 or if it was this one, but um, yeah, so we're doing this exact same thing. We're just testing for a whole bunch of conditions up here. And then we're returning true. If it's not true, then like if these, this condition fails and we're returning false and that shortens the procedure here. So we don't need to worry about it getting too laggy or anything like that. As you can see, I can move up and down. I can have uh, the block uh, move the block quite freely without it lagging or anything like that. So really good for additional conditions and stuff like that. So you can shrink the entire procedure without needing to compromise for its um, length and stuff like that. So rather than calling a whole in different types of procedures, you could basically just return certain values and stuff of the return values. So hopefully that helped you guys. Um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.